Hello again, everybody. I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about Latte Doc. I'm not sure if it's something you've heard of, but Latte Doc is a doc specifically for KDE Plasma. It is pretty fantastic. Not only is it a doc, it also lets you replace panels and very flexible layouts on the desktop. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to install it because it's unfortunately to get the newer version, it's really not as straightforward as just installing a package. It's not too bad, but it does take a few steps. And then I wanted to show a basic layout. I'm going to recreate something that's sort of like Mac OS-esque or something like that with the doc at the bottom and then a panel at the top. So to get started with this, I'm going to do what I feel like is the easiest way to do this for me. Now I run Kubuntu 1904 and I also have the back port. So if I come down here and look at the installation instructions, it says for Kubuntu only, if you add the repository for the PPA back ports and then do your upgrades, you'll get the latest version of Plasma that's in the in the back ports, which is usually the latest version of Plasma. Rick Mills does a really good job of keeping everything up to date. If you haven't tried Kubuntu and you want to try Plasma, I mean, it's really the way to go. Kubuntu team does such a great job of putting together a very solid Plasma distribution. They make tweaks to the default config. So if you were to run something like KDE Neon, the default Plasma settings are usable, but not necessarily ideal. There's some things like keyboard shortcuts and layouts and theming that all Ultimately, I always end up adjusting to look like Kubuntu anyway, because the defaults they have are usually what I enjoy using. So I'm using Kubuntu with backports anyway. So that's the approach I'm going to take. You can do this with Neon or Arch. There are other ways to do it. But because I've already done the repository and I've got the latest updates, now I need to just install the rest of these packages. So we'll go ahead and grab all of that. It's going to take a few seconds. I won't make you sit and watch that. So the other thing, unfortunately, they don't mention here. So if, if you were to just follow this, it says install that and then go ahead and do the sh install script. But what I found was that it actually doesn't work because there's something missing. And that something is the Plasma Workspace dev package. So that gets you all of the uh, KF5 development files, which you actually need to do this. And once we have that, we want to grab the repo here. So I'm going to actually go to the release and grab my source code. All right, extract this. So now I can do install. And this is actually going to compile from that source code. So it's going to take a uh, minute or two here. So I'll just go ahead and speed this part up for you. All right, so we have installed from source. And if I come and look for Latte, there we go. All right, so it's going to give you a default dock. And I'll go ahead and just move this bar out of the way. That panel. And what I'm going to do is actually change layouts. Now the layout I want isn't listed right here, but if I go into configure, go to extended and click switch, it's going to go ahead and give me the layout I want. Now you see that my default panel is still in the background up there. So I'm, I want I actually want to grab this and I'm going to remove that panel completely. All right. So now what I've got is this is the extended panel that it gives you by default. So your clocks in the middle and your calendar, your system tray on the right with your pop out for status and notifications, your kickoff menu, and then your dock at the bottom. So this is a little too big for, for me. So I'm going to come in here and just 
change the dock settings. So I want this to, I don't really like having a background. I like it being transparent. And I'm gonna bump this down to 48. And the zoom on hover I like, but I'm gonna tone that down a little. And so there we go, nice little dock. And I don't really want the clock there. So get rid of that as well. All right. And at the top here, I would like, I don't really want my user menu and I would rather have the other, uh, the, the launcher menu. So if I click this panel settings, I'm going to rearrange and move and actually get rid of that launcher, get rid of that. And then I want to add a widget. Actually, let me just close that and add a widget this way. Say launcher. And I want the application menu. Drag it up here. And you see it puts it in the middle, which is really not really where I want it. So if I come back, panel settings. And rearrange and change my splitter over here. And go ahead and close. Now you see it sticks it over on the left where I want it. The other thing I'd like to have, which is sort of Mac esque, Mac OS esque, is the uh, global menu. I kind of like that. So you add a widget and stick that up here. And the same thing again. So it's going to, um, doesn't show it until you start a new instance of the application. So here's my global menu for Dolphin. I don't want it to be in the middle. So let's do panel settings again. And we want the global menu to be the, to the left of that. Close. And now my global menu is over here. Clock is centered. Got my tray on the right. So there you go. What did that take me? Five minutes? 10 minutes, I'm not sure, probably five. Uh, and just like that, you've got this like super clean, powerful, uh, you know, you can come in here. There are literally so many settings you can change in here. I'm not gonna go through, just in this tutorial, I'm not gonna really go through all of this. I think I'm gonna do a separate one. I just wanted to show you a quick, like how to get it installed. And then you can certainly come in and play around with it but I'll do a follow-up because I want to show some of this appearance stuff as well. Just real quick, uh, I want to, I mean, you can just not have a background if you want it to be clear. I think a lot of people like that aesthetic. But maybe you want it to just be less opaque. Let's do like 50%. So it's there, but you can still see through it. And maybe a little more. Do like 30. So there you go. Nice little shadow there. You can change that if you want. Um, the other thing is, so these are the sort of simple settings, but if you click advanced, all of a sudden now you've got lots and lots and lots of different settings here from the actions that you can take with the mouse under the behavior settings, whether it's you know showing or dodging. Appearance unlocks a lot of other stuff here as well. So you can set, there's things called smart coloring with, for contrasting. There's a, a lot of stuff in here that I wanna cover in subsequent videos, and I'm just gonna break it up into smaller pieces so it's not too much all at once. But just know you turn on advance and all of a sudden you've got a ton of different options here. And really, I mean, it, it's kind of amazing how much is in here and how much it lets you change in Plasma in terms of panels and again, your dock and all of that. I can use this just to have a normal Plasma layout as well. So if I just say Plasma, it's going to just give me like a normal sort of Plasma bar on the bottom. There's a Unity layout. So there are some built-in layouts. And it'll sort of give me a Unity layout on the left. And I know it's a little 
silly that it's that size, but you just come in here and say that you want it to be I believe there's something with the length here. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to spend any too much time playing with this, but just, just know that there are so many different ways to configure, um, configure these layouts. And if I go back now, if I want to get my extended back, I would just go back and say switch and it'll put it back the way I had it. And it even remembers how I had it before. So yeah, this thing is, is crazy. There's so much you can do with it. It's so powerful. If it, Plasma itself is already so configurable in terms of layouts and things like that, but this just takes it to a whole new level and also just gives you a really super clean dock that you can do a ton of stuff with. It, it's really, really powerful. If you haven't checked it out, it's definitely worth it. There is a version, it's like 0. 0.7 something in the repo itself, yeah, 7.4. 7 so the one I have is 9.2, much newer. A lot of that stuff that you see in there is has been added as new features. 7.4 is completely usable, it's 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 fine. Uh, but to get the, the latest one, you just go through the steps I showed in the beginning of the video and well worth your time to try it out. If you haven't, I have to say, you know, to the developer, I had made a video a few months ago about flexible desktop layouts in, Pl in KDE Plasma and I covered Latte Doc. And the developer himself actually, you know, replied here with the fact that I reviewed nice comments and all of that. And I'm and at the time I was using dot eight, so dot nine wasn't even out yet. And so he was explaining some of the things here. So I have to congratulate the developer on a lot of hard work here. And I'm going to link to his channel just so that you can watch some of his videos as well. Fantastic work. And I'm definitely going to keep digging into this and I'll have some more content on this coming up. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it. Like and subscribe and all those fun things. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.